If you compare your 50 to your grandmother's 50, chances are you're liking what you see in the mirror, right? But our next guest says, contrary to popular belief, 50 is not the new 30. Author Tracy Jackson joins us this morning to explain what happens when a woman gets stuck between a rock and a hot place. Good morning, Tracy. How Good are you? Good morning. It's very interesting because let's say from age 10 to 30, okay, I'm going to go to high school, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to get my degree, then I'm going to get married, I'm going to have kids. I mean, you have really mapped out a life for yourself up to about 35. And then after that, nothing. Well, yeah, I mean, I would even say you can take it to probably 45. We, we know exactly where we're going. And, you know, some people might take the wrong off-ramp, but <laughs> they'll end up, chances are, back where they belong. Nobody tells us what happens after 50? And boomers, we're living longer. There are more of us. There's like 75 million of us. We're going to probably live into our 80s, most of us women. And no one, where are we going? I get so many questions from all of America. I don't know where I'm going. What's the plan? So nobody really sits down and tells you, what do you want your life to look like? You call from this 50 the, to 80. You call this the youngest generation of old people ever. Absolutely. <laughs> and we are. We're the most vibrant. We're the most healthy. We're the most in shape for the most part. There's mm -hmm. still two thirds of us are obese. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to live a long time. And how are we going to live those years? And people don't really sit down and go, what, am I, what, is, my, what is my life going to look like at 70? What is my life going to look like at 65. And now is the time to start thinking about it. That's really the issue. Not just that. There are other issues that you never really, you knew they were on the horizon, but you never planned for them. Your kids are now gone. Maybe your, your parent is sick or, or has passed away. You know, retirement's coming up. And you're saying these are things that no one really wants to think about. Yeah, I mean, does anyone really sit you down and go, okay, you wake up in 50 and maybe you're going to be left for a younger woman. Uh, you're, you've been <laughs> someone's child your whole life and either your parents, least, you know, some people saw their parents, some are starting to get sick, some, you're taking care of them. Uh, downsizing in the job market. Heaven only knows how much we have seen that in these last years. So 50-year-olds who thought they were going to be in the workforce for another maybe 10, 15 years, building up that 401k, the pension, maybe being able to support parents, kids in college, they don't have that income anymore. So nobody has a plan B. I think they should teach plan B in college. I think in college <laughs> you should go to plan B. This is what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to do if what I want to do doesn't maybe work out, or I get eased out of what I want to do. So I think that's a really important thing, and I think you should start thinking about it when you're in your 40s and not wake uh -huh. up at 50 when your kids are gone and you're all of a sudden alone and go, now what am I going to do? Now, you mentioned plan B because these are things, first of all, it's nifty being 50. Let's just say if you do it, if you plan right, you oh, can do it. This is some of the best times of my life. So no you question. said we've already talked about having a plan B, but you stress being healthy. Being oh. healthy is first and foremost. I am, a, I am such a nut about that. It's exercise. If you don't do anything else, take care of yourself. Because the one thing about 50, you're not, your body is not 30. You are getting older. If you exercise, you make yourself stronger every day. People go, I don't want to exercise. I'm bored. There's 101 excuses. There is no excuse not to keep yourself healthy. We have all the information available. We all know nutrition. We all know what's good for us now. It's not like it was in the 50s when my grandmother was... You know, mind. We know. Take care of yourself. If you take care of yourself, your body, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you also mentioned, um, and we're going to wrap real quickly. Very, get serious about your money. If you were yeah. sloppy in your thirties, oh, come on, let's get no serious time. about your money. Uh -uh, no time you got to do it. Be realistic about dating because you've got some other issues now. The pool may be a little smaller. Let's get real. But there are guys out there. There are guys, guys who out want there, and they may be online. Don't be shy about going uh -uh. online. They want fifty-year-olds. And I think the fifth one is is the most important. There is time to start over. You've got time. If you go now, if you start moving, you've got a great couple decades ahead of you. So we'll make them work. We don't want to paint a picture of doom and gloom. No, you've beautiful. got some great decades ahead of you. But you know what? It's not, you've got to be your own fairy godmother now. <laughs> you've got to make your life like work. That. And if you make your life work, it's going to work. Good deal. Tracy, that is, that's good stuff. Thank you. Let's hope someone gets something from that. Oh, okay. Let's hope. <laughs> All right. If you are between a rock and a hot place and you want to hear more from Tracy, she'll have a reading and book signing at 7 o'clock tonight at the Barnes & Noble in Buckhead. Ladies, I think you might want to stop by. And it's good advice in this book. For more, log into our website, myfoxatlanta.com, and click on the Good Day tab, and we will have a link to her website. All right. So